Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Novel. This edition, Stop Stories. Government secures more than 20,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine. The Ministry of Health launches a mobile component to the national vaccination campaign. And JICA's new chief representative discusses plans for the improvement of the local fishing sector. The government of St. Lucia is continuing to explore all avenues to procure the COVID-19 vaccines amid the global fight for vaccines. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shasley, who is in quarantine after his official travels last week to Miami and New York, posted a social media video informing that a new shipment of the AstraZeneca doses had arrived on Ireland. Um, we received 26,000 new vaccines um, and we're hoping that by the end of May, that we would have received another 24,000 vaccines. So that's 25,000 more people that can get their vaccinations in St. Lucia. So to all St. Lucians, let's do our part. Let's get vaccinated and let's get our country back on the road again. Prime Minister, the Honorable Alan Chastney. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health and Wellness on Thursday, 13th May 2021, launched a mobile COVID-19 vaccination campaign with the view of increasing its vaccination capacity. More in this report. Principal Nursing Officer Julieta Frederick Cassius indicated that the ministry has received another batch of vaccines and is scheduled to receive another before the month is out. With thousands of doses of the vaccine available, the ministry is adding a new strategy to its vaccination campaign in an effort to vaccinate as much of the population as possible and ultimately achieve herd immunity. The vaccines are available. We do have in stock and we want to get the vaccines out there to persons. So St. Lucians, you will not necessarily be coming to a vaccination site. We actually will be bringing the vaccines to you. And so we have identified high traffic to high commute spaces, such as the malls, um, the markets, um, bus terminals, where we actually will be setting up and to be providing vaccines to persons. We know that persons sometimes may not necessarily have the time to actually visit a center, particularly uh, as we are aware that quite a few persons are accessing those centers and it may, um, there may be a crowd and persons may not necessarily have the time to sit and wait for such long hours to be able to get vaccinated. So whilst you are doing your shopping, whilst you are running your various errands, um, also persons within those um, businesses would also have access. So we'll be actually targeting various groups when we do those pop-up and mobile clinics. These pop-up and mobile clinics will be held in conjunction with the ongoing vaccination exercise. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has collaborated with several organizations to make this initiative possible, including Event St. Lucia, FLU, Accela Marketing, the National Skills Development Center, the Rotary Club, and the managing directors at the various sites to be utilized for the mobile and pop-up clinics. Frederick Cassius encouraged members of the public to get vaccinated. Throughout the month of May, um, on the weekends, but because these are the Fridays and Saturdays are the high trafficked areas, um, persons move around a lot on those days. So we have coming, um, starting from this weekend, um, Friday, um, Saturdays for the remainder of the month of May will be actually be going around and like I said bringing vaccines to persons making it accessible so we can vaccinate as many persons as possible with both the first dose and the second dose of the vaccine to get that population immunity that we need as quickly as possible so our lives can come back to, to, to normal. So I just encourage St. Lucians to take um, this opportunity uh, and run with it because it's an opportunity to you if, you do not, if you've not had the time to visit a vaccination center. So you need to listen to where the mobile clinic um, or the pop-up site will be and to be able to access it. The public is advised to stay tuned to information coming out of the Ministry of Health and Wellness as to ascertain the locations of the pop-up and mobile clinics. From the Government Information Service, Humaiti Mark reporting. 
Since the start of the COVID-19 vaccination campaign on the 17th of February 2021, 25,760 nationals have received the first dose of the vaccine. This accounts for 14.2% of the general population. As at the 12th of May 2021, 15,775 individuals have received the second dose of the vaccine, accounting for 8.7% of the general population. Assistant Nursing Officer and Immunization Manager Tekla Jabatis says the campaign thus far has recorded several successes, including a very positive response by the public to receive the first and second doses of the vaccine. Another success for us is that of ensuring that we have availability and access to vaccines. While some countries continue, um, are experiencing challenges as it relates to availability and accessibility of vaccines, St. Lucia continues to ensure that we procure vaccines to cover the population. To date, St. Lucia has received um, three batches of vaccines, one from, Serum, um, from the friendly government of India, and two batches from the COVAX facility. This, of course, is in addition to the smaller batches that we receive from our sister islands. The immunization manager highlighted the importance of achieving herd immunity. She noted that with any campaign, there will be limitations, and one such limitation has been that of mis- and misinformation. Some of these include, one, um, getting the buy-in from, from a wider cross-section of the population as it relates to acceptance of the vaccine. Um, one of our other challenge is that of overcoming the myths and misconceptions about the COVID-19 vaccine. That being said, people are encouraged to continue accessing reputable sources, credible sites um, for the information relating to COVID-19 and the COVID-19 vaccine. And I speak of CAFA, WHO PAHO sites, and even our Ministry of Health Facebook pages. Suzanne Clovis Freitas has received both doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine and encouraged members of the public to get vaccinated. If not for oneself, do it for loved ones. Um, some of us um, who are presumed healthy, uh, especially I want to encourage them to, to get um, vaccinated. At the end of the day, it might not be for you, but it might be for the vulnerable ones around us. For those of us who teach, we need to um, take that responsibility to try to protect those who are vulnerable in our, in our sessions. Um, also, personally, those who are vulnerable around you in your family, I would encourage everyone to, to get vaccinated. Suzanne Clois Freitas there. The Ministry of Health and Wellness continues to encourage the public to get vaccinated. Meantime, St. Lucia joined the rest of the region in celebrating International Nurses Day on Wednesday, May 12th, the anniversary of Florence Nightingale's birth. International Midwifery Day was celebrated on the 5th of May. However, because all of the midwives in St. Lucia are nurses, the St. Lucia Nurses Association decided on a month-long celebration. This year's theme, Nurses, A Voice to Lead, A Vision for Future Healthcare, places significance on the importance of leadership in nursing to achieve safe and effective outcomes. The World Health Organization, WHO, designated 2020 as the International Year of the Nurse and the Midwife. Chief Nursing Officer Kufni Shalmain Suraj says, while this designation came prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, there is no better time to honor and recognize nurses for their commitment to the profession. This recognition builds on the increased visibility of the nurses' contribution to the health sector, highlighting the dedication and sacrifice of nurses island-wide. This comes as an opportunity for us as a country to showcase this and celebrate the work of our nurses and midwives whilst highlighting the challenging conditions they often face. Internationally, and no different in St. Lucia, nurses are the largest group of healthcare workers and have historically been a huge symbol of healthcare. Their skills and knowledge make them one of the most prominent pillars that uphold our healthcare system. By the nature of the job, nurses have always been on the front line in saving lives, caring for the sick and shutting, guarding our borders, protecting our children and the most vulnerable and at risk, and also educating our families and communities. 
The chief nursing officer says the pandemic has also highlighted the long-standing problems that remain unresolved in the profession. The capacity as well as the competencies of nursing professionals, nursing leadership as well as working conditions, working nursing distribution, allocated resources and nursing education are all priority areas within the profession that requires urgent attention. This pandemic has impacted our nurses in situations never seen before, such as working long hours, abuse and victimization by clients, and evolving guidance on how to care for the patients and the virus compounded by the mass migration of nurses. However, despite all the focus on COVID-19 and the challenges and limitations caused by this pandemic, the other work programs continue, and nurses continue to persevere and to perform remarkably, adhering to the call of duty to serve. This year in particular, this month, we are calling on the public and private sectors for support and action to ensure that our nurses are supported, protected, motivated, and equipped to deliver healthcare at all times, not only during COVID-19. Please let's rally together and truly show we care by making investments in our frontliners to ensure job security, ensuring appropriate protection and conditions of work, investments in nursing education and professional development. Chief Nursing Officer Kofni Shalman Suraj. President of the Nurses Association, Alicia Baptiste, has called on all St. Lucians to help nurses meet their mandate. One such way is to follow the Ministry of Health's protocols to help minimize the virus spread and place less burden on our already overworked nurses. We all depend on the resilience of nurses, the ability to deal with everything being thrown at them and still return the next day or night to do it all over again. We depend on the nurses' conviction no matter the circumstance not only to treat us every day with their critical excellence, but also to deliver that care and compassion. The lessons of Florence Nightingale, nursing practice during the Crimean War are being applied today during the pandemic, basic hand washing and maintaining standards of cleanliness. President of the Nurses Association, Alicia Baptiste. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney has also lauded the nation's nurses for their dedication to healing the sick. I can tell you I've had many experiences over my lifetime um, where the nurses really have come to my aid personally and I've seen them help so many other people. Um, so I just want to say congratulations to all of you. Um, this country owes you the greatest debt of gratitude. Um, my mom was a nurse. so. I know the sacrifices that you have been making, but it's in your nature. And I know how much you want to take care of the people of this country. And today is a day for us to say to you, thank you. You've been doing an amazing job. And hopefully you continue to feel the love from everybody in St. Lucia. You so richly deserve. Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, recently headed a ministerial meeting with the new Chief Representative for the Japan International Cooperation Agency in St. Lucia. Discussion centered on the progress with several projects, including the use of technology in the fishing sector, larger fishing vessels and improvements to fishing ports. Jesse Leos has more. The new chief representative for the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, in St. Lucia is Mr. Hiroyasu Tanakawa. He was greeted with warm reception by government ministers, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph and Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, in their first official meeting recently. Mr. Tonakawa apprised the ministers on Japan's commitment toward the Shuazel Bay dredging project and the status of the Miku Jetty procurement, among other areas of cooperation. Tonakawa says the Miku Jetty is currently being manufactured in Japan and will hopefully be shipped to St. Lucia by the beginning of 2022. The uh, contract uh, on the, uh, the producing of the uh, equipment has already been uh, done uh, last uh, the, uh, no, March, March 2021. 
And at now, at the、uh, supplier is、uh, producing the necessary equipment. And uh, hopefully, uh, coming October,、uh, they will uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, send the equipment、uh, to St. Lucia. And maybe at the uh, January 2022. Uh, to the, it will be delivered to the,、uh, to the Central Russia. Honorable Dr. Rigobert, who is parliamentary representative for Miku North, is pleased with the timeline and looks forward to the eventual commissioning of the jetty. I'm excited by this news. Thank you very much. And to the extent that, as I understand it, that the jetty is being fabricated in Japan. So, that by the time it gets here, we're looking at a very short installation period and commissioning of it. So, these、um, timelines are exciting. I'm even more confident that we are going to have a jetty for the fishermen. So, I eagerly look forward to the completion of the project. Thank you very, very much. The JICA chief representative also reinforced his government's agreement to dredge the Choiselle Bay as a short term solution to the silting problem. He noted that assessments prior to a contract for execution would involve a Japanese consultant mission to the island to determine a sustainable relocation for the dredged sediment. This trip, however, has not yet been confirmed. Due to the scarcity of COVID 19 vaccines in that country. Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources, and Cooperatives, used the opportunity to forward requests made during discussions with Mr. Tonokawa's predecessor for assistance with integrating more technology and larger vessels for fisherfolk. He also refreshed a petition for assistance to improve fishing infrastructure in Labry and expand the Denry fishing port. Some attention will be given to Denry. So, again, I just want to at least profit the opportunity to inform you that some discussion have taken place with your predecessor and your, your, your authority as it pertains to the Denry situation. And I'm going to continue to engage your good office under your leadership. As it pertains to, to the situation in Denry. Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources, and Cooperatives. 2021 marks the 25th anniversary of technical cooperation between the governments of Japan and St. Lucia. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson has the day off. The news continues after this. With all that's happening around us, simple adjustments are necessary to keep us all safe. When calling 911, we may need a little more information to deploy the right personnel and protocols. You may be asked about your travel history, signs and symptoms, contact and movement history. And whether others in your household are exhibiting similar symptoms. Please be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. The Sir Arthur Lewis Community College has activated a contingency for applicants who will not receive their CSEC results in time to start the new semester. The new Sir Arthur Lewis Community College's semester starts September 6. However, the Caribbean Examinations Council has pushed its 2021 CSEC schedule past this date. Sir Arthur Lewis Community College's Communications Officer Natalie Jolie Fannis explains the new pathway for accessing the institution's programs. Applicants who do not yet have passes in CSEC Math and English are asked to write our entrance exam in those two subjects, that is Mathematics and English. And that exam is scheduled for May 26, Wednesday, May 26. And in order to register for that exam, you can visit our website as well, where you'll also see a graphic and you can register. So, in an application, it's a registration for the exam so that we know your interest. 
Menu pathway will also accommodate mature applicants who do not possess CSEC passes. The evaluations will be held at both the North and South Campus of the Community College. Jolie Fanis also informs that applicants exiting secondary school this year may submit qualifying CSEC results that they may have obtained in previous years for acceptance. The applicants who have written CSEC Math or English in January or in uh, the fourth form year, maybe last year, these results will be accepted. So you simply need to give us a copy, either a photograph or a scan of your results and upload that with your application. If you've already submitted your application and you did not do so, please feel free to email that information to us. Um, and you can do it via the email addresses that you see on the application form. Individuals interested in any of the programs of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College for the new semester beginning September 6, 2021 are encouraged to call the Student Services Department at 457-7324 or visit their website at www.salcc.edu.lc to apply. Applications remain open until May 31 for their regular associate degrees, certificates and bachelor degree programs. The OECS Commission has partnered with several agencies, regional and international, for the hosting of a special telephone to aid the volcano stricken St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Hamadi Mark has the details. St. Vincent and the Grenadines is suffering from crippling effects of the La Sufia volcano. Approximately 20,000 people have been displaced due to volcanic eruptions. This represents 20% of the country's population. The island is also experiencing a total devastation of the agricultural sector, with the economic loss estimated at U.S. $153.1 million. Pyroclastic flows from the volcano have started affecting several villages. This indicates an impending restructuring of the infrastructure. The red zone, which is the most severely affected area, is seeing an increase in the spread of COVID-19. The spread of the virus is also taking place in shelters. Recognizing the difficulty faced by the country, the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States OECS Commission, in collaboration with the Global Coalition for SVG and the Oxygen with Nicole, O2N Foundation, launched the Stronger Together campaign. The campaign rallies participants across the global community to contribute to rebuilding St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez is the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We are at the midnight hour of our need. Make your pledge now. Be generous. Stronger together. We will rebuild. We are a global family. Help St. Vincent and the Grenadines at this our hour of peril. Making a call to action at the launch was Director General of the OECS, His Excellency Dr. Didacus Jules. Now we look ahead to the long-term recovery of the island touched by the catastrophic explosive volcanic eruptions and recently floods. That is the foundation of our Stronger Together initiative. We recognize that family stretches beyond the OECS to the wider Caribbean archipelago and beyond. We all need the help we can get to rebuild the lives and livelihoods of our people in St. Vincent and the Grenadines because we are stronger together. Influencers from across the region are championing this worthy cause, including Dwayne Bravo, Alison Hines and Skinny Fabulous. It warms my heart to see our own Vincentians on the ground doing all that they can to help to better the situation as there are now over 13,000 people living in shelters, displaced, homeless and unable to go back to that place that they once called home. It warms my heart even more to see the help of our Caribbean neighbours and the international community coming together to come to our aid. If you are interested in helping, it is not too late to do so. Embedded in this video and in the caption is how you can play your part. Any little counts. No donation is too small. To contribute to rebuilding St. Vincent and the Grenadines, visit www.stronger.org.
www.oecs.org or participate in the virtual telephone on May 23rd at 2 p.m. From the Government Information Service, I'm Hilmeti Mark. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am General Norvell.